This release is somewhat unique in that the oil at the surface and in the tar balls and other matrices we've tested is contaminated with higher percentages of toxic polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons, some of which we've measured are carcinogens that are rated as probable human carcinogens. Thus, this oil exposure is more toxic than that of fresh virgin crude. There is a problem with dermal absorption in this matter that has been outstanding for some time. Predominantly, workers have not had Tyvek sleeves taped and sealed to their gloves. And I have many examples and photos of workers in the water collecting sludge and material with their sleeves immersed in water and water entering the open glove. The health consequences through the dermal contact related to the weathered BP crude in this matter is primarily that of the probable human carcinogens chrysine and benzo B fluoranthine that we've measured predominantly throughout the samples tested. And the health effects primarily from those two compounds are that of increased risk cancer and chromosomal uh, aberrations, genetic damage. Uh, it's insidious with a latent response. That is, a person who has been chronically exposed would have no adverse health effects for several years until a malignancy develops. The second avenue is that of inhalation of fumes. Inhalation has been documented in at least five worldwide studies of oil spill cleanup workers. The latest was published on the Prestige oil spill off the coast of Spain only about a week ago. And these human epidemiologic studies show statistically significant increased rates of lower and upper respiratory tract symptoms, uh, chromosomal genetic damage, and uh, neurological symptoms. And the problem we have in identifying this, that is the average physician, would ultimately mistake the early symptoms as flu. The symptoms initially include nausea, uh, vomiting, uh, fatigue, headaches, a uh, very consistent pattern of that we see all the time with a 24-hour flu bug. Uh, 